Hi, and welcome to the Complexity Vidcast, uh, coming to you live from uh, San Jose, California at the Federated Computing Research Conference. Um, say hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. <laughs> okay, we're starting off at the NSA booth, which has a real Enigma machine. And uh -huh. Bill is going to learn how to use the machine. Indeed. Uh, Lance, you recently you teased me because I use a mail system from 1985. This is even older. Okay, so I am a true Luddite. Uh, Bill, 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 yes, Bill. Yes. No, I haven't learned the lesson. You see, you ah. press the letter all the way down, the coded letter comes up. So I press A, and Y, and comes, y up. comes up. And if you turn the dial back, <laughs> I turn the dial back, and then I press uh, Y. Notice that A, it, it replaces replace it. No, no, no. I am going, I am not going to look at the word you type. Okay. And and I, I'm going to write down the current number, which is 10. Okay. 140910. And I will not look at what you type, and I'll just look at the letters to get lit, lit up. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, no, no, start, start, start. Uh, oh, yeah, I missed that. Start, start again on 12. Go ahead. S, M, T, wait, 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 let it, oh. J. J. Okay, hold it down for a second. Go ahead. T, E, Y, H, A, N, I want to see, okay, are you done? Yes, I'm done. Okay, so now, what we do is we go, is we set the dial back to 12, and then I type in exactly the code that uh, Bill had typed. So I type in S is B, M is I. I have a I kind of guess what's going to come out come after this. <laughs> uh, T is L. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna magically guess. I'm gonna get another L out of this. L. Oh boy. Am I just gonna get Cassard? Yes, so you are. Okay, okay. You are so original, Bill. Well, okay. I'm on the spot. But the the key is you can actually. Um, can you reopen this up? Absolutely. I'm not even an expert on this, you know, I got this demonstration a couple of days ago. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the way it works is there's these three rotors and, and they, in, you know, they encode some sort of uh, permutation. And, um, and, it, and it's uh, like a permutation that swaps two letters. Yeah, right. So that time. way you can use the same, the same coding for, um, um, and you can actually remove the rotors, right? Mm -hmm. So if people get a job with the NSA today, will they work on great things like this? Even better. Even better. Wow. Right. What We've advanced this? far beyond this. What, what, four rotors? Five rotors? <laughs> and there's also these, uh, these letters where you can kind of short circuit letters together. But those, these are the rotors. And this is a real Enigma machine, right? This is an original Enigma machine. Right? And, uh, you, and your name is? My name is Adam. Adam. Okay. Uh, how much of a role does the NSA have in capturing Bin Laden? <laughs> Were you a member of SEAL Team 6? Keep going. <laughs> All right, no comment. Fair enough. Okay. And what are you doing here at FCRC? We are recruiting. Which is interesting because most of the attendees here are actually foreign nationals and we, we hire U.S. citizens. Uh -huh. But we're happy to, to promote uh, research that we're interested in. And You're happy to get here and get a free lunch. There's that, yes. <laughs> and actually also many of you are attending the various conferences. That's right, actually all of us are attending various conferences. Okay, you can pan and show yeah, off the, uh, of some the of the other uh, happy NSA. And in fact, there are several more. And they're happy too. See how happy they are? <laughs> they're happy that it's the conference yeah, yeah, almost insane. over. Right? Uh, actually, so am I. How about you, Lance? Um, it's, I've been here since Saturday. Uh, today's Thursday, and I've been here since Saturday, and it's, it's been exciting, but it has been a, it is a lot of, uh, a lot happens for over several days in the conference. I've been here Monday, and same thing. So Lance, did you go to Ryan's talk? Uh, Ryan Williams, yeah. Today Ryan Williams gave the best paper talk at, uh, at um, Complexity, as uh, our blog readers we know. I mean, everyone knows. What? As everyone so, knows, yeah. So tell us tell a little bit your experience with Tell, us, tell you about the paper. Oh, oh, so this is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, you know perhaps one of my favorite results in the last several years. It sounds technical. It's it basically says that nine terms of exponential time can't be solved by constant circuits with um, with mod gates. Uh, 
but what makes it important is just in a historical context. So um, circuits were very exciting in the early 80s. We had uh, uh, first act Sipser uh, showed that parity could be solved by constant depth circuits with just ANSORs and knots. And, um, and then there was uh, Roswell Slomansky who showed you couldn't solve you know, uh, mod 3 circuits with, with constant depth mod 2 gates. Um, and so there's very, there's a lot of excitement going on. Razbrov showed that you couldn't solve clique by polynomial sized monotone circuits. It's exciting time. And if you could show that you can't solve NP clique problems with polynomial sized circuits, you separate P and NP. And get so, one million dollars. And well, no, in fact, anyone. Oh damn! So people um, knew the answer, but, but, but the Mike Simpson, uh, my advisor, and I just started. You know, also I just started grad school right in the middle of this in '85. And my advisor, Mike Simpson, was like, "Wow, P versus NP is right around the corner." Okay, <laughs> and then so after this Razvod Slomensky and this, uh, and, um, and so the results in like 1986-1987, when do you think the next great circuit result was? Uh, I believe it was this morning. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was in fact <laughs> Ryan Williams' result, which, which does seem like, but it actually is the next step. It really, and, it, and not only that, not only is it a nice result, it's a really beautiful proof, pulls in lots of recent research ideas, and, and connects it in, um, in a, just some really beautiful ways. He has, a, he, has, he has this new approach of using upper bounds to get lower bounds. It's, it's very clever. It gets around natural proofs by working on uniformity, even though it's against a non-uniform model. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it just, you know, it's just like a paper that does everything right. But Lance, tell us about your class in paper. Oh, oh, so last fall, I was teaching graduate complexity. And in fact, you know, somewhere halfway through the class, I said, we don't even know that you can't solve non trivial exponential time with constant depth and mod six gates. And then I went to Fox and I came back and said, now we know. <laughs> and, uh, and then a couple weeks later, when Ryan, Ryan sent me a write-up, I actually taught the, the uh, proof in my class. So you taught the proof and went right. to his talk six months later. So did you get much out of his talk? Um, I mean, it, he's always entertaining, Ryan Williams. And I uh, actually had a great, uh, I liked his last open question, which was, so he showed that you could use upper bounds to show circuit lower bounds. And the open question is actually reversed, which is kind of a cool idea. I mean, could you use circuit lower bounds to prove algorithms? Wouldn't that be cool? Although, maybe you can't. But it would be cool. <laughs> it's if a you cool could. idea. Huh? We, all, we need more cool ideas. Uh, let me tell you about one paper I actually liked a lot. I saw it in Italy about a week ago as well by our cameraman. Uh, how do you pronounce your name? Massimo, <laughs> okay. Massimo Laria. Laria. Okay, so he did. Um, I'll turn it around and show your face. <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay, okay, good. Okay, good. You can turn it back. Okay, <laughs> uh, our shy cameraman, perhaps. But uh, no. Um, so as you probably all know, uh, resolution uh, resolution systems for pigeonhole principle. There are cases that require exp exponential length proofs. Correct. To refute it. And so he then proved, people had proved that Ramsey theory also requires long proofs. He now proved Paris Harrington, a version of it. Ramsey theory actually has long proofs. But the weird thing is, this sounds backwards to me. You too? Okay, yeah. He agrees, yeah. So now, it should be that proving Paris Harrington is hard to prove, is easy to prove, and pigeonholes are hard to prove. Well, I don't know. It, it, it all seemed backwards, but. Proof of is a hard area, so well, I respect that. No, but it's sort of like, like, like the uh, circuits, right? I mean, parity is hardly a hard function, right? <laughs> Don't you think it would be easier to show the halting problem can't be solved by a, by a constant F circuit? Uh, actually, it can. Oh, yeah, it can. But, uh, <laughs> that's, like, that's why it's hard. Prove that. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, but say, say, like, instead of like working on, oh, I'll look at uh, uh, the matching problem or a clique or something, he says, oh, let's look at the simple parity problem. And because of the nice properties of parity, in particular that if I... Um, you set some variables of parity, you still have parity. Mm -hmm. Parity is okay. basically the only interesting Sorry. function like that, other than trivial ones. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, that, that, that really... So sometimes looking at simpler functions give you more structure, but to solve problems. Actually solve okay, now, Lance, for first time, complexity, no proceedings. Your thoughts? Um, there is a proceedings. There is a proceedings? Um, yes. I didn't, get, I didn't get one. I will show you. Oh, okay. I I need, now, pretty much everyone who has an iPad has Whoops. been doing has been uh, has been you know doing the great uh, an iPad. I still use a digging machine, please. So, for example, I go to FCRC, I go to CCC, and I have proceedings. Okay. And then you know, I want to read a paper. Let's just pick a random paper. That's Ryan's paper. That's not random. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Non-uniform. No, no, I can even mark it up. I'm like selling an iPad here, right? Okay. Okay. Ooh, look, I can highlight words. Uh, I can. Uh, 
Okay. Point All is sorts that- of. Oh, yeah, everyone with an iPad is 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 like saying, "Oh, isn't this cool?" It's like five minute proceedings, and now, <laughs> you know, I have stock and EC proceedings on here too. Okay. Uh, so the point. And is I'm that- not. I'm not really an Apple spokesman. <laughs> not yet. But uh, if you work for Apple, and you want to send me the new iPad too. I would be willing to take it. <laughs> It was kind of weird. First of all, I agree. I like not having like proceedings back home, certainly. I like that a lot. Also, stock, also, no proceedings, good. But the weird thing is, I registered for the conference. I'm used to registering and getting a bag and a pen and a pad and all kind of duties, and doodle, doodle things, whatever, and getting two proceedings or one proceedings. And now I just said, register, bag, that's it. Oh, but you can get these great uh, NSA. Uh... Are you also not a pitch from the NSA? It's a either? ruler. It's a, it's a leveler. It's a leveler. And it's and, a pathetic and it, pen. And it's a real bad pen, right? It's a really bad pen. God. But you know what? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's witchcraft. <laughs> and beating NSA, it's a deadly weapon. <laughs> ah. Okay, is that true? Did you strangle Ben Laden with this? <laughs> the, great, the, great question, the great thing about this is, is, you know, all they can say is no comment. <laughs> <laughs> what, you can see what it's written. What's written on the bottom? What's it say? Made in China? Yeah, made in China. Made in China. Oh. Okay, well, um, we give us our money, we give them our money or whatever, and they <laughs> give us these. Okay, no, but seriously, I like not having proceedings, just weird registering and getting an empty bag, and nothing else. Um, I'm kind of, I'm used to registering meaning something, but I'm happy. I'm very happy, not, not a proceedings. Will we ever go, go back to proceedings? Will we go back to, I, we have proceedings. All They're right. just not on paper. That's true, my Luddite tendencies are showing. Okay, Welcome um, to the future, Bill. Okay, we, we are already here. Okay. Actually, uh, the conference, ISCA, did have proceedings. Remember? Yeah, uh, ISCA. ISCA. Oh, yeah. I, I don't remember. Now, but, uh, but ISCA also got travel bags. Well, we got bags. The architecture people, they have a little bit more money than we do. Well, but having a lot of money does not mean they want proceedings necessarily. Um, no, yeah. but it means they can have them and throw them away. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Lance, have you gone to the plenary sessions? Uh, some of them. And I mean, uh, the, the point is, is like, for example, uh, uh, there, are, there are plenary speakers that I've seen in Northwestern, like David Ferrucci, who gave that awesome talk at Northwestern. That, you know, it's awesome, but I don't need to see it twice. Uh, I don't know. Talk's the best thing twice, maybe three times. <laughs> then I actually understand them. <laughs> ah, aha. You went to Ryan Williams' talk, and you said you eaten that before, haven't you? What? Ryan Williams' talk. No, okay. actually, I haven't seen Ryan talk in really? this talk before. Okay. What can I say? I mean, we're one of the places that he uh, did it's an not- interview. Well, well. <laughs> Well, for those aspiring PhDs, Ryan got a job at Stanford, so prove an awesome result of the postdoc and you can get a job. That's all you've got to do, correct? Uh, yes, everyone is one theorem away from uh, an awesome job. <laughs> <laughs> so it can happen to you. And uh, Mauricio, you too. Come on, Mauricio, I want, by next, by next complexity, I want you to prove uh, exponential lower bounds, pigeonhole principle on Frigg systems. Are you game? <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> hmm. Our shy cameraman again. <laughs> I think he's shaking his head. Okay, so is FCRC a good idea? Is FCRC, uh, uh, you know, I like it every four years. How, it's how, nice how? to get the community together. It's nice to see people outside of theory. It's nice to get different theory conferences together more than usual. Um, but, is there a but uh, coming but, up? But, but, yeah, but it's, it's a crazy week. And, and, you know, I'm part of many communities. And I, I mean, even though I'm only registered for EC and stock, of course, I've I've actually been at presence at every complexity since the beginning. That reminds me, you're going to drive historians nuts, you know why? Why? Because uh, Linus has said in his blog and then people, to people like myself that uh, he's been to every single complexity conference. And I've physically been there. But when historians in the future look back and see what you registered for, they'll say, hmm, he missed the first one, the tenth one, and the twentieth one. And they'll wonder how to reconcile this contradiction between you claiming you were being there, but the record says otherwise. Ah, they'll wonder. Uh, somebody will write a very bad thesis on this I, I think it's safe to say that historians of the future just won't give a damn. <laughs> they will run out of things they're interested to talk about and go, and go to you. And the origins of complexity theory, uh, well, of, which you are, of which you will be a great part. Well, I'd love to tell the story that um, in November of 1962, Yours <laughs> Hartman has wrote in his journal that, you know, that he had just developed this notion of uh, computational complexity. So, you know, so in November of 62, Computational complexity was conceived, and nine months later I was born. Ah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I find that to be a non coincidence. <laughs> okay, want, want to wrap it up now? Uh, and, until Bill and I are together again, um, um, in a complex world, best to keep it simple.